Okay, it's kicking in. Okay, all right, so we're recording this so that people can watch it after the fact. Um, so thank you all for having me. Um, like I said, I'm Rachel Robinson, and I'm a freelance agricultural communications writer and marketer. Um, I hope you all get a lot out of this presentation um, and hope you have a rest, a great rest of your J Day experience. Um, so who are heroes in capes? Everybody loves a good underdog story. We see them in movies and entertainment in TV shows and books. Um, we're always cheering for that underdog and we are rooting for them. We want them to succeed. Um, and I'm proud and honored to be able to represent an underrepresented and un underappreciated group of people in our society. So this group of people are truly heroes because of their determination, work ethic and humility. They get up before dawn every morning and are up past dark every evening. They're slogging through mud. Um, they're planting, they're growing our food, they're raising animals to the best of their ability. They're devastated when things happen to their crops or livestock. They struggle day in and day out to bring our food to the table. So, th And so often our larger society sometimes vilifies them or doesn't really understand what they go through to get our food on the table um, and or others say they aren't doing what they should be doing and these people take a deep appreciation and value in being good stewards of our land and making sure that they are doing what they need to do both to feed our country and the world as well as be sustainable on the land and in their operation. <clears throat> so we're talking about agricultural journalism today. So why I chose AgJ. So the average person is four generations removed from a farm. So it can be hard for the general public to understand agriculture and it can be hard for agriculture to understand what it's like to be away from the farm for four generations. So there's two viewpoints that have a hard time seeing eye to eye and truly understanding what the other is going through. Um, I am actually an agricultural journalism legacy. Both my parents are in agricultural journalism and actually from the University of Missouri. I graduated in 2010 with an, a Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Journalism. And what that meant at that time is I took classes in the College of Agriculture, Food and Natural Resources, and I also took classes in the journalism school. And it provided a great opportunity to really understand the agriculture industry as well as get the experience from the number one journalism school in the nation and arguably the world. So to combine a top agriculture school and a top journalism school was ideal for me. Um, and while there aren't any easy jobs out there, I can honestly say that I can't imagine any other job being as personally rewarding and fulfilling as agricultural journalism has been for me throughout my career. So I get to tell stories about farmers and ranchers and why this industry is so important to our world. And ag journalists can help society learn more about this underrepresented group and bring them the respect and appreciation that they deserve. So today we're gonna to talk about why agriculture, why it's more exciting than maybe you're thinking it could be, um, what kind of career opportunities you could have in agricultural journalism, and then the types of projects I've been able to work on throughout my career. <clears throat> so why agriculture? There are about a million quotes about agriculture online if you Google it, but I personally love this one by Thomas Jefferson. It says, agriculture is our wisest pursuit because it will, in the end, contribute most to real wealth, good morals, and happiness. So some background on me, I'm a fourth generation involved in agriculture. Both my grandparents had um, farms um, 
and my family we raised quarter horses on and on my dad's side I'm a fourth generation quarter horse producer um and actually my grandparents on my dad's side lost their farm in the 80s farm crisis and on my other side um, those grandparents are still involved in agriculture in some way to this day and I know that personally I'm happiest when I'm working in my role talking to farmers and ranchers representing them um, interviewing them taking videos of them writing stories about them. Um, it's been a very rewarding career for me so far. And agriculture really is the backbone of America and what we've been built upon. Um, when the settlers came to America, many, pretty much all of them were farmers in some way. And it's also the backbone of what our future looks like. Um, everybody has to eat. And we say in the industry, if you eat, you're involved in agriculture. So pretty much everyone is involved in agriculture, even if they don't really realize it. Um, so it, and we have to make sure that people can continue to eat and um, can continue to get their nutritional needs met. And it's an industry that needs to be talked about, celebrated and understood by the whole country. And then farmers also need help being able to translate what they do on their farm to people who might not understand what a day-to-day -day operation looks like. So a common misconception is that most, most farms are owned by what people would call big ag. And in fact, 99% of all U.S. farms are owned by individuals, family partnerships, or family corporations. So we really can't judge the size of the farm by the size of the farm, how big it is or who owns it, um, whether or not it's owned by a family, because this industry is very volatile. So there have been many, many farm crises over the course of time, um, and lots of farmers go out of business each and every day and year. And so farmers might have bought their neighbor's land to make sure it didn't get developed, or maybe they needed to d expand to be able to make ends meet themselves, or maybe they were pretty successful on their own operation and they just expanded. Um, and it's not uncommon for multiple generations to be working on the same farm. There are so many farmers and ranchers that I have personally met and talked to that uh, there's four generations currently working on the farm. There's you know some grandparents that might not be as heavily involved in day to day and parents and kids and their kids and everybody is you know building on the land and they live right close to each other and it's a really cool environment um so when we represent these farmers and ranchers in the industry i get to represent families and many times um like I said, there's multiple generations on the farm, and that doesn't happen very much in other industries. Um, to be able to work with that whole family unit and everyone is working together for the common good of the family farm. Um, a common misconception, at, you guys probably know this, but um, it's crazy how many people will say to me that they think their food comes from the grocery stores or from other countries or you know who knows what they actually think it's crazy but in fact farmers a farmer produces enough food and fiber for 165 people each year both in the u.s and abroad so agricultural journalists get to tell these stories and inform the public about what these farmers contribute to their daily consumption of food and fiber Um, and many of the products we use in our everyday lives are actually byproducts of, of things produced by American farmers. And agricultural journalists get to tell those stories and help Americans understand that farmers are responsible for so much more than just the food they ingest and the clothes they put on their body. But many of the everyday items that we use in our, in our daily life can be credited to farmers. X-ray, film, paint, detergents, crayons, textbooks chalk, strings for musical instruments, the list goes on. So farmers have a bigger impact 
than even most people know and understand. So let's talk about some stats in the agriculture industry. So agriculture, food, and related industries contribute contributed $1.109 trillion to the U.S. gross domestic product in 2019. So that's a 5.2% share. And the output of America's farms contributed $136.1 billion of this sum. And that's 0.6 of the overall GDP. The overall contribution of agriculture is actually larger because of all of the related industries. So that would include food and beverage manufacturing, food and beverage service, eating and drinking places, textiles, apparel, and other leather products and forestry, and fishing. So it's a big industry. It contributes a lot to our overall society. Um, so as you can see in the chart, in 2019, there were 22.2 million full and part-time jobs that were related to agriculture and food sectors. Um, that's 10.9% of total U.S. employment. So direct on-farm employment accounted for about 2.6 million of these, jo these jobs, or 1.3%. Um, you'll see that 13 million jobs, that um, light blue portion is food service, eating and drinking, um, and then there's also food and beverage stores, textiles, food and beverage and tobacco manufacturing, forestry, fishing, and related activities. Um, so that the remaining agriculture related industries added to 3.4 million jobs. So 22.2 million jobs, 10% of our employment in the US. Um, so I've been talking about how important ag journalism is and why it's important to tell stories about the farmers in the industry. So let's take a look at what that actually looks like. So I hear all the time that, um, don't you just write about cows and plows? And well, I mean, sometimes I can could write about cows and plows, but it's also so much more than just that. There's so many more opportunities. Um, in editorial, there are a lot of agricultural publications that communicate directly to farmers um, and they have digital editions and social media and lots of opportunities within these magazines that farmers rely on day to day to do their livelihood. You could also be on an agricultural beat at a just general newspaper or magazine. Um, there are a lot of opportunities for someone who understands the industry to help translate agriculture into something that consumers could understand. Um, there's agencies. I personally have worked for two agricultural based communications agencies, um, and there actually are a lot across the country that you can work for that, you know, there's um, lots of opportunity there. Or a lot of times an agriculture company might go to a non-ag agency just to inject some different ideas or different ways of thinking into the way that they're doing business. And there's a lot of value in having people at those companies who understand agriculture and know some things about the industry and can help translate and make sure that what the agency is doing is on target with the industry. Um, in industry corporate, there's lots of opportunities in animal health. You could work for a nutrition company that are focused on getting the animals the feed that they need to grow animal health, um, whether that's pharmaceuticals to keep them healthy or, um, you know, something to treat them when they're sick or vaccines to make sure they don't get sick, just overall protecting the health of livestock and especially so that that they won't translate anything into human health to keep things healthy for animals and for people. Um, there's crop inputs where um, the things that you put on the plants are put in the soil to help the plants grow better. 
Um, there's lots of opportunity there. Um, and that is an industry that's growing a lot by um, what they call biologicals, which are naturally found organisms and things that help plants grow and help get rid of pests and things without chemistry. Um, there's a lot of equipment opportunities. Um, you know, obviously you would recognize John Deere and maybe Case IH um, tractor companies, but you know, they're more than just tractors because a farmer would need to put up hay, they would need to um, harvest their their crops, they would need to plant crops. Um, so there's a lot of needs within equipment. That's a very big industry and in helping farmers learn how to use self-driving tractors and a lot of the new technology that's coming into um, equipment and help them use it better. Um, like I mentioned, there's lots of new technology in agriculture. It might seem weird to think, but um, you know, the more technology, the, the more we advance, the more technology breaks into agriculture and finds ways to improve farmers' return on investment and help them to be more efficient and make things better for, continue to make things better for the environment. Um, there's things within the fruit and vegetable market or turf and ornamental flowers and that kind of thing. There's opportunities there. Um, to those are largely considered within agriculture kind of a, a um, extension. Um, you could go into photo, photo journalism. Ag journalism is a great way to kind of break into outdoors or nature um, or crop and livestock photography. There's lots of need for that. Um, I personally have a friend who takes photos at um, the national parks in Wyoming, and he um, he takes beautiful photos. I went to school with him in ag journalism, and that's what he does now is take nature photography. Um, so get your pins out and write down a few resources if you think agriculture journalism could be something you're interested in. So I believe there's a science and ag J track within the journalism school, as well as an agricultural communications minor in the College of Agriculture, Food and Natural Resources. There's an organization called Agricultural Communicators of Tomorrow or ACT that I believe is still active um, at Mizzou. Um, get internships in agriculture and, you know, it's just soak it in. Maybe you find a local farmer or rancher around you and on your um, breaks, you just go to their operation and learn about what they're doing and learn about the industry and get that personal farmer experience. You don't have to have a background in agriculture to be successful in the agricultural industry. You just have to kind of take those extra steps to make sure that you understand what's happening and you kind of understand the industry. Um, once you graduate, there are lots and lots of Mizzou agricultural journalism graduates out there who can help you. Um, there's lots of um, Mizzou College of Ag graduates who can help you. Um, and there's a lot of opportunities both within Missouri and nationally with lots of different organizations that you could be a part of. Um, agcareers.com is another good place to look for both internships as well as full-time opportunities. Um, I'm sure the Career Services Department of the College of, Ag of Agriculture could help you um, find some of those internships or full-time jobs. Um, National Agri-Marketing Association has a Mizzou chapter that would be good to get involved with. There's, so there's lots of opportunities if you don't come from that background to learn and find opportunities and have those as you um, graduate. So I graduated agricultural journalism and at that time we had a hundred percent placement rate of our graduates, um, more than $548,000 spent in the agriculture journalism industry um, profession as of 2017 and it grows almost 4% each year. Agriculture isn't getting smaller, it's growing and growing. Hello? Okay, um, I'll keep going here. Um, 
so that grows in every year as agriculture grows there continues to be more need for people who can communicate about agriculture and we consistently are running like a deficit in the industry where we just need more agricultural journalists in the industry we need more people <clears throat> and actually um when i was a freshman at mizzou and i walked into one of those huge lecture halls one of the you know beginning classes to take um the professor said who are all the agricultural journalists um in the room and you know there were a handful of us and we kind of looked around raised our hands we were all kind of sitting together because we didn't know all these other people and she said everyone look at those people those are people who will have jobs when they graduate and it was true that within three months of graduation every single person i graduated with had um had jobs and like i said there continues to be more and more need for agricultural journalists in the industry less than two percent of our population are farmers and ranchers so that means that 98 percent of the country is is who agricultural journalists are communicating to about farming and ranching and that's a huge target audience for um, your work and the things that you're doing and the responsibility to communicate with them and these stories need to be told by someone to bridge that gap between the 98 percent and the two percent help them to see each other's perspective um, so for one of my clients right now they help develop and bring new technologies to market innovation is very is more important in modern agriculture than ever before the industry as a whole is facing huge challenges from rising costs of supplies a shortage of labor and changes in consumer preferences for transparency and increased sustainability um, there's an increasing recognition from the agriculture corporations that solutions are needed for these challenges in the last 10 years agriculture technology has seen a huge growth in investment with 6.7 billion dollars invested in just the last five years and 1.9 billion in 2019 alone and i've seen a lot of news articles out there that actually 2020 saw an increased investment from 2019 um, which seems counterintuitive with covid but um, with all of the shutdowns we really saw ways that the agriculture industry can be better and so a lot of investment came in to help make that happen um, so there's lots of opportunity to either be in a technology company that wants to expand into agriculture or an agricultural company that wants to expand their technology so there's a lot of really awesome things happening in agriculture drones and um, you know self-monitoring of livestock GPS, precision agriculture, aerial images, um, satellite images. There's more technology in agriculture than, than you can possibly imagine or be able to fathom. So it's a great opportunity to um, be on the cutting edge of the industry. So one of the reasons I love ag journalism so much is the opportunity that I get to be really creative and then um, from photography to video to creative and strategic storytelling um, it's rewarding to be able to use my creativity to tell these important stories about our past present and future so um, one of my previous roles was at the american angus association and i managed the 2019 annual report as the lead writer and directed the creative direction so annual reports um, can be really boring but um, i actually found a way to make this project really exciting um, that was a year of really push and pull between the way things have been done in the past and moving forward um, so the content and creative direction of this annual report focused on tradition meets progress and updates were organized with that in mind and were presented through that lens and this won several awards through the um, through the ag industry um, and it was a really fun thing to work on 
um, one of the very best projects probably I will ever work on in my career is called Losing Ground. Um, in 2018, the American Angus team decided to do a documentary that would both highlight Angus breeders and advocate for an issue that they're facing to other breeders as well as to the general population. And we settled on the issue of urban sprawl, which, you know, is just like how it sounds. The city centers sprawling into farmland areas and farmland getting developed. Um, so I produced the documentary and wrote the voiceover script and wrote the accompanying feature story that appeared in the Angus Journal. And this won a lot of awards, including um, many film festival awards that weren't even directly involved in agriculture. So it was a very rewarding experience and really exciting project to work on. It even inspired a um, festival in Idaho um, of, you know, farmers in the local area just celebrating their heritage and protecting the farmland. So I'm going to just show you guys um, about five minutes of this and then I'll wrap up and get to questions. So just give me one second here. And I'll pull that up. Oh, here we go. Make sure you can hear the sound. My anger has become a sad acceptance of human ambition. The relentless waves of wealth and debt that may go hungry with no landscapes left to feed their souls or flesh. The landscape of the United States is changing. From their origins as small farm communities, cities have become thriving urban centers. Rivers of cars and trucks compressed between houses stacked like cordwood, between parking lots and mini malls ready to serve anonymous strangers. Their boundaries advancing year by year, consuming space once graced by amber waves of grain and pastures with dots of cattle usurp more earth, sterilize and seal it from the sun and rain. Pushing farms further out into the seemingly endless supply of land. But that land supply isn't endless and it's rapidly disappearing. You just cannot have much of a farming operation in that kind of surroundings. The farm to the left of me is people own it or trying to sell it. As a result, the security of our food supply and the future of America's farmers hang in the balance. I view farming as our future. If we don't get farming right, we just can't hope for a sustainable future. John Piatti leads American Farmland Trust, whose research brought this issue to national attention. Urban sprawl is what happens when development begins to encroach on areas that had been rural. We knew we were losing farmland, but we've been able to pull together the best data that has ever existed on this stuff. And it's shown that we're actually losing farmland almost twice as fast as we thought before. And the numbers are uh, 1.5 million acres a year, 175 acres every hour, so three acres a minute. And um, it is it is alarming, it should be alarming. That is a irreplaceable resource. Some loss of farmland is inevitable, but that level is simply unsustainable. I haven't 
and been back here but about four times in 14 years. Uh, it's a little bit emotional. Born and raised in Gwinnett County, Georgia, John Lovin grew up farming, running Angus cattle and raising chickens with his father on the same farm his family established in 1841. 66, I got my first Angus heifer and, and Angus bull, and uh, we showed it at the local fair and had champion bull and heifer, and that kind of hooked me. These were the chicken houses. Now it's grown up after my mother. Well, my mother was still alive. My dad had passed away. Um, she had had breast surgery, and it brained I had a good summer. We cut up. I hear my dad talking to me a lot every day, and my mother. As I got older, we continued on the farming and uh, increased the cattle. In uh, 1980, I married my lovely wife, and we raised four children here. Lived here about 25 years. Under the mounting pressures of urban sprawl, John, Leanne, and their children left the land for the last time in August of 2004. Okay, um, so if you guys want to watch the rest of that presentation or that video, um, you can just Google losing ground Angus, A-N-G-U-S, and you can be able to watch it. Um, so I just want to thank you guys for listening to me today. Um, I'm open for questions. Um, you can ask me on here. Right now we can, um, you can send me an email or reach out, um, or I have a website that you can take a look at um, if you want to see more projects that I've been involved with in my career. Um, I am happy to help anybody who um, who is interested. So, um, any questions that anybody has today? Okay. Well, it. Oh. Okay. Um, looks like no so thank you all for joining me today hope you got a lot out of this presentation and would consider a career in agricultural journalism like i said it's been very rewarding and fulfilling to be able to represent such salt of the earth people um these people are genuine and they really care about what they're doing and it's an opportunity to represent them when they don't get a lot of representation to the world and help them be more successful. Like I said, feel free to reach out if you have any questions or want any help finding um, opportunities or anything like that. Appreciate you all taking the time today and enjoy the rest of J Day.
It kind of was, except I didn't lose my sense of 